All right guys, so today we are painting this hall tree, which you can't see the whole thing, but there's a seat down here. And we're going to be chalkboard painting on here. We're gonna be using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, so stay tuned. For today's DIY, we're gonna be using the Critter Sprayer. We get a lot of questions about milk painting and spraying, and so today we're gonna to give you all the ins and outs of spraying milk paint. We're not putting any extra bond in the milk paint. We're just going with straight milk paint, hoping for lots of chippy. We'll see what happens. This is just Sweetie Jane. A lot of times Jamie likes to mix it with Pantry Door. Today we're just gonna go with the Sweetie Jane. I've got two scoops of the powdered paint and I'm gonna add warm water, also two scoops of that. And then because I'm using this in the Critter Sprayer, I'm just gonna add maybe an extra ounce, just a little bit at the bottom because I want it to be slightly runny. And then I've got my immersion blender and gonna whip this up real good. Okay, so run that for about 20, 30 seconds. That should be plenty. Now I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. That's gonna help the bubbles get out of it. It's also going to help the water absorb into the pigment so that it's really nice and mixed up. So these bars in here are metal and the rest is wood. The milk paint is going to stick to this pretty well. We might get some chipping, but it's got a little bit of texture on it. So I think it'll work out really nice and chip just like the wood will. So to adjust the spray settings on this, all you do is adjust your air pressure and if you want a wider spray or a narrower spray, you just turn this little nut right here, right on the nozzle, and that'll adjust your spray. It's spring-loaded, so it holds its position very well. I've got my air compressor set to 65 PSI. I found the milk paint sprays really well, right between 65 and 75. If you want to strain it, you can. I haven't had an issue using the immersion blender. It gets all the little chunks out really well, but straining it's not a bad idea. So I'm using DIY Little Black Dress as a chalkboard paint because it's super matte. I can take super fine sandpaper and sand it smooth and it'll be perfect for a chalkboard. I'm just using my IOD foam roller on a paper plate. You could use something reusable if you want and getting it nice and even and then rolling it on my board. I'm gonna let this dry completely, then I'll come back with one more coat, just so that way I know that it's fully covered, and then once that's dry, I'll take and smooth it out with some super fine sandpaper. The paint's all dry and we're ready for distressing. I'm using my dust mask because this paint isn't toxic, but I don't want it in my lungs. I'm gonna be using my DeWalt Orbital Sander with my 220 sandpaper. I'm gonna lightly go over all the surfaces and especially around the edges. I just wanna remove any chippy paint as well as give it a light distress on the edges. You can see right here that it's chippy and the paint's just coming off. This is what sanding it will help it do so it will reveal how much chipping there actually is. So these metal bars we're not going to sand. We're just going to use our hand to remove the chippy and then we'll probably use the air hose to get rid of the rest. I get asked a lot, how do you decide whether to wax or to use a liquid top coat? In this case, it's a very chippy piece 
And anytime I'm using milk paint and it's super chippy, I always use a clear wax instead of a liquid top coat because if you use a liquid top coat, you're gonna get a lot more chipping and sometimes it's really hard to control. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Paint Pixie wax brush and my clear DIY wax and just go ahead and put this on here to seal it. We have a full video that I'll have Zeb link to all about waxing that has all the information about dry times and buffing. It'll be important to watch that video if you've never waxed before so you get all the ins and outs. Instead of extra fine sandpaper, which I couldn't find, we're using a piece of brown craft paper. A brown paper bag will work too. And we're just gonna go over this lightly and smooth out any like texture that was caused by the roller. It's pretty smooth already and there's not any strokes, but I just wanna smooth it out. And it's okay if it gets a little scratchy, that's fine. We're not gonna seal this. We'll season it with a piece of chalk and then it'll be ready for a chalkboard. This is what the paper's gonna look like when you're done. It's still gonna have a slight bit of texture, but it's gonna be pretty smooth and easy to chalk on. I've got just a plain piece of white chalk and I'm just gonna season it. I'm just gonna take my round paper bag and go over it and kind of smear this around. I would just wait 48 hours before you do any chalk art. That's just gonna let that DIY paint cure a little bit more and you'll be ready to chalk away. I'm attaching the back and I'm using two and a half inch finish nails to hold this board on. You'll see we didn't paint it. Two reasons. One, it's designed to go up against the wall and two, I don't like to waste paint. So it's fine to just leave it like that. No one's gonna leave this back end that's all gross and not finished facing outward so I'm just going to leave it not painted. To get this to go in I can't staple it like I normally would. The wood has been routed out too thin for this inset here where this goes in. So to get this chalkboard in I'm going to just nail these up in here and that will hold that in real good and tight. If I ever need to remove it just give them a little wiggle pull them out. So my $10 fine didn't turn out so bad after all. Yeah, I thought it was 75, so I'm a little happier to find out that it was 10 because when we picked it up, we did not have room in the garage for it. And now it's been in there for two months. Maybe three months. I'm not, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I would say that for resale value, this is gonna sell for 225 all day long. It's really solid and sturdy. It's a great entryway bench. It's got storage down here. Somebody could come in and add some hooks if they wanted to. We made this into a chalkboard. I don't know why it was, what it was before. It was just a blank MDF board. I have no idea why it was there. It's basically filling the hole where the window would have been in the door. Well, I'm wondering if it had something and that was the backer to it and it like fell off or something. Maybe, could have been by the time we got it, it might have been in pieces. But it's done now. And somebody could also take and put like a nail here and hang a wreath, which I think would be really cute, which I might actually do when I put it in the shop. So if I sell for 225 and I put a $25 wreath on, then I'll go ahead and sell it for like 250. Yeah. So that way it covers the cost of the wreath. So we used DIY paint in Little Black Dress and then Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in Sweetie Jane. We didn't use any extra bond because it, we wanted it to be chippy and it wasn't super shiny to begin with so we knew it would stick pretty well. And then it's sealed with clear wax and we used the Paint Pixie Wax Brush. The sprayer you used, what was the sprayer you That's used? the Critter Sprayer that I used. And we did use a little bit of shellac just over those rings and a couple of them came back through but it's chippy enough it doesn't matter. We're going with it. Zeb will drop the link for the shellac and the critter sprayer since we don't sell those on our website, but all the other products listed you can pick up at jamierayvintage.com. If you have any questions, comment below. We know spraying milk paint and milk paint in general can be challenging and maybe a little bit scary, and we wanna make sure that you really understand it before you use it and you can enjoy using milk paint. Yeah, even if you're just brushing it on, you might look at it when it's done and be like, wow, everything just chipped off. So we can help you with that if you're having those kind of issues. Also. Another thing to keep in mind, I only showed mixing up about a half pint of paint. 
it ended up taking about a pint and a half. So if you were going to do a project this big, I would probably just go ahead and buy a quart, that way you have plenty of extra. We only mix up a little bit at a time because once it's mixed up, you have very little shelf life before it can start going bad. If you do need to keep it and you notice that after a few hours it's not gelling up, throw it in the fridge and that'll give you the longest shelf life possible. Be sure to share this video with your friends that love DIY and are interested in milk paint. It helps us grow our channel so we can make more videos like this. Make sure you're hitting that notifications button so you don't miss our next videos. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.